In this chapter, we're taking a look at the basics of MySQL. And in the last movie, we walked through those basic steps of CRUD, create, read, update, and delete. And in this movie, we're actually going to try to apply those statements to MySQL. To do that, we're going to need to log into MySQL and build a database for ourselves. So let's do that. I'm going to do that by opening up my command line utility, which on the Mac is terminal, and I've put that in my dock already. If not, it'll live inside your applications, inside utilities. And if you're on Windows with WAMP, you should have a link directly to MySQL from your WAMP menu. Once we're logged in, we can connect to MySQL by simply typing MySQL-U for user, root, because we're going to be the root user. You could also log in with a different username. And I'm going to put in password, and then I'm going to specify what my password is. Now, you also could put in dash P, and it would prompt you for your password as the next step. But we do need a password here. And earlier, I set my password to be OTLPHP07. You may have set yours to the same thing, or you may have picked a different password. Either way, you want to put in your root password here, or if you're logging in as another user, that user's password. Once I hit return, it'll put me into MySQL. And it'll say, great, welcome to MySQL. Now we are inside MySQL, ready to issue commands to the database. And the first command we're going to issue is going to be the create database command. Now don't worry too much about memorizing that command. We're not going to use it very often. Plus, I'm going to show you an easier way to do it later. And let's go ahead and create a database. I'm going to create one called Widget Corp. Because when I create my content management system later, I'm going to create it for a fictional company called the Widget Corporation or Widget Corp. So widget underscore corp is going to be the name of the database that I'm going to create. And I'm going to put a semicolon at the end. Semicolon, like PHP, is the way that MySQL knows that a statement has ended and it's time to execute it. It came back and it said, query OK, one row affected. Now that lets me know that it created the database. Now I need to switch into that database. I need to tell MySQL, right now it's in sort of a root MySQL state. We want to move into that database so that all of our future commands that we type apply to that database. And we do that with use widget corp and a semicolon. And it says, OK, I changed databases. I'm now inside the widget corp database. So now we need to issue commands that will apply to that database. And the first one is we're going to create a table. Oops, T-A-B-L-E. And I'm going to call this table subjects, all lowercase. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about table naming later. For now, go ahead and follow along with something like this that's very simple. I suggest subjects because I'm going to use this table when we work on the content management system later. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it about that table as well, what fields it should have. So a database is a collection of tables. You can almost think of it like having Excel spreadsheets. And maybe you even have several different tabs inside an Excel spreadsheet that you can switch between. Those are our different tables. But databases, unlike spreadsheets, are going to have relationships between the different tables that will allow us to jump from one to the other and look up information about one based on information that's in another. So we're creating a table inside a database. So let's get used to using the terminology of table when we're talking about subjects. I'm going to open a parenthesis. I'm going to hit return. Now, because I haven't hit a semicolon yet, it's still waiting for the end of its MySQL statement. And it prompts me with a new line. I'll put in id int parenthesis 11. What I'm telling it is that the first field will be a field called id. And it will be an integer that's allowed to have 11 places in it. So I'm not exactly sure what that works out to, but a million would be seven places. So I guess that's a, a billion, something close to that. And we're going to also give it the command not null to make sure that what goes into it is not null. And we've talked about null already. Increment. And that's going to make sure that each time the ID goes up in value. So when I insert one row, the next one will be the next ID. So first row I input will be ID 1 and then ID 2 and so on. I hit return after that comma and I'm putting in a new name. This is going to be menu name. And its type is varcar, which is something like a string. And I'm going to tell it it can be 30 places long. That should be long enough to hold most of our menu names in our content management system. It also should be not null and put another comma. And then I'll put in position. And that's going to be what position our menu should be in, whether it's going to be the first menu item or the second menu item. 
And because we're just going to hold first, second, third, fourth, etc., integer of size 3 should be enough to hold that. Not null. I'll put a comma. And then the last one we're going to put in is visible. And this one I'm going to make into something called a tiny init, which is a tiny integer, or we, as we know it, a Boolean. It's either going to be 0 or 1, on or off. And last of all, make it not null as well, so that we always have a value. And then we're going to tell it that the primary key is going to be ID. And once we've done all that, hit return one last time, close our parentheses, because that's the parentheses we opened at the top under subjects, put a semicolon, and hit return. Query OK. And it says zero rows affected, but it did create the table for us. So we now have a table called subjects that has those fields in it, ID, menu name, position, and visible. Don't worry too much about primary key. The important thing is that the primary key in every case is going to be the ID field, the main ID field that we can reference it by. Remember how we talked about you can update a record based on its ID or delete a record based on its ID. We're telling it the primary key is the ID so that it helps the database quickly locate that ID field for us.